So, what's the year of rowing corn for geneticists? So we planted this field on May 10th and 11th. Uh, we're currently fourth to fifth leaf stage. Today I was just putting uh, stakes in every 10 rows or five plots so that approximately three, four weeks from now, we'll be hanging tags on each plot uh, with the barcode and the plot number and all the pedigree information so that when we come back and take flowering time and plant height, uh, we can find the correct row pretty easily. And then in July, what we start doing is we start uh, trying to make sure we can control the crosses uh, that we are going to make between various varieties of corn. So here at the top, we have the tassel. This is the part of the plant where the pollen comes out. So the pollen falls off the tassel, it's blown by the wind, and then it lands on the silks here. And this is what pollinates the corn plant. The pollen tube grows down the silks and fertilizes the, the kernels. And the kernel is the part that you eat. So this right here is the ear of the corn plant. Uh, the first step every morning is to take these shoot bags and to look for any ears that are just developing. We're gonna try to make controlled crosses. So we would bag that before it soaks out, look for any remaining ears in the row and repeat the process many times over. So the reason why we're shoot bagging is to cover up the ears before the silks are exposed. Uh, we're trying to make controlled crosses where we're gonna take the pollen from this single plant, put it on the same plant or a plant within the row, which would be called sib mating. So we start putting bags on the silks and we go out there and we'll start every day monitoring the corn plants, deciding when they're about ready to flower. And when they're ready to flower, we make crosses between those various varieties of corn that we've decided are gonna be most beneficial to our research. So we're gonna take this, this tassel and we're gonna use the pollen to pollinate this other row here. So we're gonna give it a couple taps. Take it around, you see there's some good pollen there. Close up the bag quickly. Okay, so we're gonna make the cross. This bag was cut back, or this chute was cut back and covered up yesterday. We should have fresh silks. So to prevent contamination, we're gonna do this quickly and make sure the silks aren't exposed. We're gonna lift this up. You can see the silks. You're gonna lift it up. Plenty of pollen. That should be a good one. And we're just gonna bag this up. In about 45 days, maybe longer, we're gonna harvest this plant. So this same trial that we have right here is being planted in another 22 different environments and basically each of those environments is going to have different uh, rain conditions and temperatures. So we are taking measurements of those and then also taking measurements about how the plants are behaving, how they flower, how tall they are, how much uh, corn are they producing. This implement here is actually a simple stack of barcodes. And we use this to estimate how tall the plant is. We have a cell phone that we've specially programmed to record height data. And then we use a barcode scanner. And then we scan that barcode. And that records how tall uh, each plant was. So this is just a very quick, straightforward measure to understand, allow us to understand the genetics of how, what's controlling the plant's height and also then understand how it's interacting with the environment when we compare our data with our colleagues' data from around the country. So what we're trying to do here is actually uh, take leaf samples. So we have all the information that we have measured about this plant, the height, the flowering time, that stuff, and we want to connect that to the genotype. So to do that, we actually want a tissue sample that we're going to sequence. So we put a tube on actually just a regular hole puncher, and we punch holes in the leaf, and you'll see they're actually in the tube. And in the end, this will all be sequenced. And then we come back in September and October, we harvest the corn crop. Yeah, so at the end of the season after harvest, we bring all the ears in, uh, and if we want to phenotype them for certain traits, uh, this is when we do it. We'll measure everything from ear length, ear width, uh, the number of kernels around the cob, the, the rank or the number of kernels from the tip to the bottom of the ear, uh, color, the type of kernel, and anything else you can think of.
the resulting stuff from the field, so mostly it can either be leaf tissue or actual kernels of corn, is then DNA sequenced here back at Cornell, and we look at the sequence and we're trying to attach the sequence data, which is literally strings of A, T, C, G, and you then combine the genotypic data with the phenotypic data to attach which thing is controlling flowering time, which, which set of letters, which part of that chromosome, where in the genome um, is that particular physical attribute changing or being affected. So you have to do both. Uh, you can't just look at the thing, you can't just take genotypes because then it doesn't mean any, there's no, there's no way to interpret what it's doing. So the final goal uh, will be to try to understand how the different genes in the plant uh, respond to the environment. And then uh, once you understand how uh, that relationship works, you should be able to actually manipulate it. I think the ultimate goal would be to find out the genes and the regions of the genome that are actually uh, affecting the traits that we'd like to see, such as increased yield, um, earlier flowering time in certain environments, and then take those regions of the genome and put them into an inbred to make a commercial hybrid that could be released to the public.